everybody, it's Karen. I am so happy you're here because look at this really fun, fun card. It was designed by Sarah Treblecock and I will link to her video down below, so check it out. But it's a snow globe that folds down flat, stands up beautifully. And on the left is Sarah's actual design. In fact, her rings were an inch higher. So her final card measured five inches by eight and I've made mine a little bit smaller. Uh, and you can see the difference right there from the side and also right there in the base. Now the card I'm making today is a little bit wider than that and these are the measurements that I have used. So if you want to take a screenshot, that might help. Uh, but I'll go through this with you. So I started with a piece of four inch by 10 inch card and you want it to be really good strong card because it's got to hold up the weight of those rings. So I'm scoring it at one inches, two, three, four, and then you jump over to six inches and then do seven, eight, and nine. And you just want to score those quite well. So, you know, if it's heavy cardstock, be sure you've got it. So that's what it should look like. And then you're going to rotate that. And we're going to score at half an inch in and just go down to that third score line or the three inch mark. So all the way down to the third score line and then over here at three and a half inches down to the third score line. And then you want to rotate that again and do the other end exactly the same. So at a half an inch in and all the way down to three inches or the third score line. And then three and a half inches down to the third score line. And so then you should be left with something that looks like this. Now on this diagram, all that scribbled out part is what you want to cut away. So it's really pretty easy because these last score lines we just did are actually cut lines. So you're going to cut right up to the third score line, turn and angle your scissors so that now you're going all the way to that next score line right at the edge there. And then just cut a diagonal line to that. And then on the other side, I just personally find it harder to cut that way, so I flip it over. <laughs> and uh, cut right up that score line to the third score line and diagonally across to the corner there. So it's pretty simple. And then you want to rotate it and do exactly the same thing at the other end. So cutting right up to the third score line and diagonally across to the end there. And flip it and again. So not too hard. So now all of those folds are going to be mountain folds. So you're just going to fold them all under and just get them started. I just finger pressed for now. And now I've cut one inch by four inch pieces of mirror, silver mirror cardstock. And this will go on the base of the snow globe. So I'm putting it on that triangular section there. And then just from the back, I'm trimming that off. And I did do that on both of the triangular sections. So both sides will look the same. And now you want to make sure that you burnish all those folds. So here I am just pressing them all down. I prefer not to burnish on the silver side, so I just flip it over. Now these sections are going to end up being right underneath and the base of this uh, globe. So they will fold under. So this first section you want to fold it the second score line and make sure that you can fold that base up and over it. If it's too long, just trim this little hair of cardstock off. Nobody's going to notice this whatsoever, but you do want to be sure that that will fold, the base will fold over this section. So I'm just putting some glue on that now. And then at the second score line, you push that down flat and then fold that base up and over it so it will catch it. And then you should, it should look like that. So you can see how nobody will notice if you've cut, trimmed a little bit more excess off, it's tucked underneath. So again, I'm folding at the second score line, checking to see, and this one definitely was a little bit too long. So I'm just trimming a little bit off that one. And then just make sure that that base will fold over it. And then you can put some glue on that very first section and there I'm pinching at the second score line, flattening that down. 
and then you're going to fold the base up and over and it looks like that box we just created will not go but it does it flattens out so it should look like this when you're done we haven't glued the inside but that will come but that's basically the base of the globe now here I'm just making some snowflake acetate I'm just splattering on some white acrylic paint and I have fussy cut these little characters out of this page from the 6 by 6 inch paper pack of Snow Time 2. Now I chose to use the 12 by 12 inch landscape piece there, but you could make this work, I think, with the 6 by 6. I think if you just added some snowy layers at the bottom, or maybe that top layer of trees you could add in behind the, the little house. So I'm sure it would work. Now my circles, I've used this Creative Expressions Noble Stitched um, collection. The largest one is four and three quarter inches, and then the inside of that is four inches. So to make those rings, I have just pieced together the two coordinating or step one size step down uh, dies, and I cut four rings. Now, the reason I did that is because this is my first card, and I felt like that acetate was a little wobbly. So I've cut four of those rings and I cut a ring from pattern paper just to put on the back of my, um, my, my snow globe. And so then you don't need that smaller ring anymore. Everything else will use the larger size ring. So I'm cutting this larger ring from the pattern paper. I cut one from white cardstock and I've cut my snow, uh, snowflake acetate down with that larger size ring. And here I'm just gluing that uh, landscape piece onto the white round back that I had cut and I'm adding on a little snowflake border just to cover the bottom and I trimmed that down. And so now here I am adding that little ring that I cut from pattern paper to the back and that just sort of defines where you can write your message I thought and maybe finished off the back a little bit. And since I had the fluffy stuff out on my desk, it went on this card also. So there it is, all heat set. Now I've put some double-sided tape on my acetate. Uh, and I'm just going to attach a ring first to the front. And I did attach another ring to the back of the acetate. And that's where the four rings came in. So I'm just carefully lining this one up. And uh, trying not to let it go out of, out of kilter there. If you do go over, you can just trim that acetate down. And you can see on mine, I did go over a little bit. So I did have to trim some of that off. Okay, so now on the inside of this, you want to put some double-sided adhesive. And so I've really stuck that down there. And then you want to fold this um, in both directions and just really burnish those, those folds. Make sure that they will go both directions. Now I'm just showing you here on the back, I'm lining up, trying to center my base to kind of see how much overhang I have because I don't honestly have a, a proper way of telling you how to attach these on. I eyeballed mine for the most part, but I could see how much width I had. And for me, it depended on my, my envelope. I always work from the envelope back because I just don't have an eight inch envelope. So here I'm lining up that base. I've got it flattened out as it will be when it's in the card. And then I just want to be sure that my snow globe top will fit within that envelope. So I'm just uh, figuring out how much I can get away with there. And once I'm, I've got that, I just put a little pencil mark just underneath that base so it's not going to show. And I've put some double-sided adhesive and some glue on that. And now because I have that pencil mark, I just need to line up from left to right and then press that down just so I cover that pencil line. And so that was where the back went on. And it did look fairly, I was kind of lining it up with my mat there. Now to put this character on at the back, I just wanted him to have a little dimension. So I've put about three pieces of scrap cardstock on the back of him and then I've glued him down to the back and so he sort of stands up and away from the back a tiny bit. Now I've used this lamplight tree collage die again. I just cut the trees from it and the lamp post this time and now I'm taking the release paper off the one side of that inside of the, of the globe and now here's the tricky part because 
I don't have a good way of telling you, but you can see the height at the top there. It's not going to be lined up exactly because when you push that base up, that middle layer rotates up, but it's it's down about, I don't know if that was three quarters of an inch or an inch at the top there. So I just lightly tacked that on and I didn't really press that down till I was sure I had it where I wanted it to go. And then I just pressed it right down. And then you can take the release paper off the other side and fold that up and over so that catches on to that middle acetate as well. Now on the front one, you can see how that base will show through. So I've just cut a little snowy border there and I'm gluing that on and trimming it off. And then I'm going to glue this little tree in and I just glued it to the base at the bottom and the top. Now those little stands are to make those little characters stand up on the platform. So I just created these with a half inch strip of scrap card and this one I'm scoring every half an inch. And so long as you have five sections, you'll be fine. So those are five half inch sections. They're all going to be mountain folds again. And then you're going to put a little glue on the last one and join it up with the first one. And that's all you have to do. And that will fold right down flat. And then you've got something to stand those little images up against. You could glue them to the back layer of acetate. I just kind of like them standing up and away on their own. So there's the little box that you'll create. And you can see it folds down. Now this other one was a little taller, so I made these three quarters of an inch. So I'm making five three quarter of an inch sections here and uh, making it exactly the same as the other one. I just trim this off now and then fold them all down and glue it together. And so that will be a little bit um, of a bigger base for the, the taller image there. And then before I put the next layer of uh, acetate on, I I like to glue these down. So I'm just gluing it there, pressing everything down flat, making sure it's caught. And then I trimmed the bottom of these off just a little bit, just so they were flat against the, the bottom. And I glued those in place. Same with this one, trimmed the bottom and glued it on. And now here I'm doing, I've got some double-sided tape on the back of this um, snow at the bottom there. And I'm just trying to make sure I've got my tree going straight and I'm trying to keep the spacing um, up and down of those rings even and even left to right. And that should make it work, but I don't have a formula for that, you guys. Watch Sarah's video because she does hers, her rings are the same width as her base and she uses her score um, buddy to, to line everything up. But mine worked. I've done it a couple of times and it's worked both times. So here I'm just adding on a little sentiment and look how fun that is. I think that is such a fun card design. I, I love it. It's just like a snow globe. So that's it from the side. You can see where those characters are. And the back, you've got space to write your message. It stands up and you can see with the double layer of ring of cardstock on that acetate, I think it's a little bit better. It's not quite so wobbly. And there it is all tucked into an envelope, so it's quite flat. So thanks for joining me, everybody. I hope that's given you some ideas. I hope you'll come back again tomorrow for the next one. See you later. Mm -hmm.